Hey guys, welcome back. This is the uh, Commander Insights, where I'm going to be giving you some insight on some deck techs. This is going to be a update for my Atla Palani Nest Tender deck, uh, one of my favorite decks. This is going to be for December 2021 with the new uh, Crimson Vow and the Midnight Hunt releases. Um, not a ton of cards that we added, but we have done a couple changes since playing the deck that I did the update back in, I believe, September. Um, so this is going to be um, pretty much a full-on update. I've changed a lot out, made the deck more consistent. We still have the same problems that every Atla Palani deck has where we need to protect our commander, we need to ramp without using creatures, and we need to basically uh, draw our sacrifice outlets um, to be able to sacrifice the eggs. Uh, in the Naya colors, red, green, and white, there's not a lot. Um, I wish that there was black incorporated in this somehow, but uh, we still make it by. I do have a couple good includes, so we're going to get right into the deck tech. Alright, so we're going to run through this a little bit differently. I'm going to run through the creatures first. Uh, one, because it's the most important, and the meat of the deck, and two, because they probably saw the least amount of updates and, and changes, but uh, we're going to run with the Harmonic Prodigy. Still one of the best cards in this deck, I think. It's great for um, basically uh, making sure that you get double triggers off of your Atla Palani, because uh, it's a Shaman, so whenever it goes off, it, double, it happens twice. There's also another artifact in this deck that makes everything all types, and so you get real uh, funky with it. Uh, it's called uh, Maskwood Nexus. I'll get to that later. Uh, Summoner's Egg. This is a great card. It's the only actual like creature egg I run in the deck, um, but it's just kind of a two-for-one. Um, so this gets out creatures. It can help cheat out creatures, even if Atla Palani's not on the field. Um, the egg just has to die. We run the Elvish Piper to cheat out creatures from your hand because uh, sometimes they get stuck. We Same thing with a Champion of Ronus. Uh, we do run a, a little bit of a package that helps get stuff out of your hand in case they do get stuck in your hand. Uh, Perforos, one of our win conditions. Uh, you drop that. Um, as long as it doesn't become a creature, then, you know, even if it does, it's really not a big deal. But uh, when it's not a creature, every creature that you bring out after that, it does two damage. So um, pretty much the Atla Palani effect overall is four damage because you make an egg, you sacrifice the egg to bring out a creature. There's four damage every time you do that. Uh, Academy Rector, not a necessary card, but super helpful in getting out some of our really big, important enchantments that we need. Um, this is a sack deck, so it's very easy to kill this thing. Um, your opponents definitely won't want to, but, you know, you have enough sacrifice outlets where you can pretty much do this on demand. Um, I like to grab Possibility Storm whenever I can. Seedborn Muse, because having turns during your opponent's turns is awesome, and it's uh, one of the best things for this deck, and you can basically keep bringing out um, creatures every turn to the point where when it becomes your upkeep, you know, they're all coming off uh, summoning sickness, and they all essentially can attack. Uh, Nesting Dragon, another way to basically make eggs. Um, this is kind of another little bit of a two-for-one. When this egg dies, you create another dragon. Um, and this egg counts as an Atla Palani trigger as well. Terror of the Peaks, another really good win condition. Uh, whenever a creature comes out from onto your field, you can ping uh, an opponent um, or a creature for the, the target power. Um, so you bring out a big 11-11 uh, and you can do 11 damage to their face. Um, it's a really good win con. Um, definitely uh, probably win most of my games off of it unless it's through combat damage. That's, this is the second way. Uh, Atali, a Primal Storm. Uh, everyone knows what it does. You uh, basically get a lot of value when you attack with it. Aurelia for double combat. <clears throat> Hellkite Tyrant for another uh, win condition. You know, we uh, run Smothering Tithe and we run the old Gnawbone creature, which I'll get to in a second. So we can pretty much get um, 20 treasures pretty easily and win that way. Or you can just steal your opponents. Uh, one of my favorite cards, I, I just like the art on this, but also it's effect Dragon Broodmother. Um, so you create a 1-1 dragon in the every upkeep, so you basically goes around the board, you get four, um, and then they can devour. So when they come out, they can sacrifice creatures. So if you don't have any other sacrifice outlets, you can use this devour to kill your eggs if you want to, or you can build up the little 1-1s and then devour them all on you, uh, when you need to to create a big 5-5 five five or, or, or a 6-6 six six, uh, token as well. And then uh, Gisela... Uh, doubles the damage of you um, and halves it against you. So this is really good with Terror of the Peaks or any of those other ones that do damage. Perforos uh, just speeds it up. <clears throat> Balefire Dragon, another awesome dragon that when you connect with combat damage, it what basically can wipe an opponent's board of creatures um, as long as they're under Balefire Dragon's attack. So uh, another really good card. This is kind of a new include, Dawn Glade Regent. Um, this was actually included because... I was looking for more protection to put in my deck for Atla Palani. And so what he, what uh, Dawn Glade does when it comes out, you become the Monarch. And as long as you're the Monarch, permanence you control of Hexproof. So um, if you become the Monarch, it's pretty hard to lose the Monarch. One thing that uh, having the Monarch and having your opponents attack you is pr a pretty good thing because it means you can use your Atla Palani and block with the eggs. 
which is usually what they won't do. So, you know, it's kind of a pickle for them, um, as well as it helps you draw. So that's another good draw engine. Um, old knob on there's the other one that makes the treasures. Uh, mind you, it's whenever any creature does combat damage, so not just him. So if you swing with uh, 13, 15, 20 power and connect with it all, you're gonna make 20 tokens. It's not just him, which is why this card's amazing. Avenger is Endicar, another awesome card. Uh, works well with Perforos. You know, you bring those two out together if possible. You know, based on your lands, you can be doing anywhere between 20 to 40 damage. If Giselle is out, it could be game. You can wipe them out and all your opponents out in one one swing. So pretty awesome. The other half of that uh, win condition with uh, Terror of the Peaks would be the Stalking Vengeance. Um, kind of an underrated card. I don't really see anyone else really running this in an Atlaplani deck. Um, basically, it does the same thing as Terror of the Peaks, but only when the uh, when the creature dies. So you, you burn them when it comes, and you burn them when it goes. So you bring out a big 9-9, you do 9 damage to it, to a target opponent, and then you sacrifice the 9-9, you do another 9 damage. And both of those can be 18 with a Gisela, so it really gets out of hand fast with the burn damage. It's, just, it's like a second win condition. Then we run a Tracidon, it's good targeted removal, uh, can pretty much pop anything except creatures, which is uh, a lot of stuff, so there's not a lot of things that can do that. Uh, Utvara Hellkite, um, another great card. We run a lot of we run enough dragons to make this worth it. Um, every time a dragon attacks, you make a 6-6 red dragon. So it's great if you don't have Vigilance because you can still swing with all your dragons and then create tokens that are able to block. And then those tokens can also swing next turn and then create even more tokens. So uh, it gets out of hand real fast. We run a Platinum Imperium. Uh, it's kind of another uh, protection spot because your life total can't change. Um, the only downside it that I find in our decks is uh, you can't do fetch lands, you can't bring in shock lands untapped, you can't really pay life of any kind, um, which is fine because it's not really a huge deal. But the upside is you basically can't lose life. So you, your opponent can swing in if they have an aggro deck, if they have a drain deck, if they have anything that can just take you out in one turn, you just, you're not going to lose. So this is a really good card um, just to kind of bring in. And I've gotten lucky and gotten an Atla Palani trigger and brought it out right about before I was about to lose. Uh, cool stuff. So Zakama, Primal Calamity, amazing card. It's a Naya. It's a commander of its own, but uh, it's really cool with uh, with the Seedborn Muse because you get the effect uh, every turn during your opponent's turn. You can you have access to the all three of his uh, his effects. Um, and then on top of that, it's got you know Vigilance, Reach, and Trample. So uh, going into Void Winnower, um, this is an amazing card. Uh, Mister Can even you guys probably know about it, but uh, it's really good in this deck particularly because of Possibility Storm. So if you have this out with a Possibility Storm, uh, which I'll get to in a sec, uh, let's say that they cast a, a spell. First of all, it has to be an odd spell. So let's say it's a, like a Swords of Plowshares for one mana. They have to go search for until they get an instant. And if that instant is an even converted mana cost, they can't cast it because Possibility Storms that you have to cast the new card too. So um, it's really good because it's basically that double protection for Ala Palani. Uh, it's really hard to get rid of um, especially with the two combo with that. I accidentally figured that out, didn't even mean to, but uh, it's real dirty and uh, your opponents will hate you, but it's an uh, amazing card and combo. Cos like the Great Distortionist because why not have some counter magic? Um, you have a pretty decent hand size usually. Um, there's some draw cards in the deck and you're bringing stuff out from the deck, so you're not really utilizing your hand a ton, uh, which is good because you can conserve it. Um, and so Kozilek will, you know, allow you to discard. I've discarded, you know, Avoid Winnower and Countered a Blasphemous Act. A lot of people don't see that coming. So um, it definitely comes in handy often. And then it's a big 12-12. Uh, then we run the other Kozilek. Uh, the Annihilator 4 is just amazing. Uh, you don't ever really cast it so you don't get the draw stuff. But just having a big 12-12 that comes out for free when you sacrifice an egg is awesome. And then the other one is Ulamog Infinite Gyre. Same thing. Um, and what's cool is with both of these out, you basically are a little anti-mill because you... Uh, Shuffle your entire graveyard into your deck whenever it hits the graveyard, so it's a lot harder to mill you out. And next we're going to get into some of the enchantments. Um, I think that this is the second best category of, of cards I run. Um, the enchantments really help speed up the deck, really help protect the deck, and uh, you know really help you win with, with the uh, enchantments. So the first one is Oath of Druids. Uh, this isn't going anywhere. I love this card. It's kind of another Atla Plani effect if your commander's not on the field or if you have less creatures than your opponent. You basically uh, go till you get a creature, put the rest in the graveyard, and you get that creature out. The only problem is it affects everyone. So each upkeep, anyone can do it as long as someone else has more creatures than them. Um, so eventually, if you're doing this right, you will no longer be able to do it. But your creatures are probably going to be better than everyone else's because you're running a creature deck with huge creatures. So um, it still has always been coming handy. I love this card. 
Uh, Steely Resolve, another really good card that I put in. It's been in and out of the deck, but I think I'm leaving it in this time. Um, I always declare Shaman, so when it comes out, you declare a creature type, and creatures of that type have Shroud. It applies to everyone, so um, I wanted it to affect my commander, and there's a ton of humans out there, so that's why I wouldn't recommend saying human. Um, probably more Shaman. You know, there's not a ton of Shaman commanders, maybe a Marin, a couple others that I can think of, but uh, it's a really good card, and it helps protect you. And then when you have a Maskwood Nexus out, uh, pretty much every it, all your creatures will have Shroud, so it's really cool because... Mask with Nexus makes all of your creatures all types. So now getting into some of the sack outlets, we run Evolutionary Leap. Um, we are trying to run an abundance of sack outlets because that is the one thing that we absolutely need uh, to draw early. Um, we need uh, a sack outlet of some type in order to get our engine running because otherwise you're just going to make a ton of little eggs. Your opponents will not attack you, at least on the ground, um, so you won't be able to block with the eggs. And so we need to find ways to kill the eggs ourselves. And so we run an evolutionary leap, it's kind of a two for one. You know, you get a creature from your deck with that Lapalani effect, and then you get a creature to your hand for next turn or whenever you need to cast it. Makeshift munitions, it's a uh, weaker goblin bombardment, um, but it does the same thing. Sacrifice an artifact or creature, in this case it'd be the egg, deals one damage to any target. Goblin bombardment, I would say this is probably one of the best, um, for the enchantment side at least. Um, the other uh, sack outlets are more artifacts, but uh, now getting into the other enchantment, the other important enchantment, which is going to be uh, haste enablers. You want your creatures that come out during your turn to have haste, so you can swing in or you can get their effects if you need to right away. Um, so the first one is fervor, very simple, just creatures you control have haste. Fires of Yavi Maya, same thing, and then you can also sacrifice it to give it plus two plus two. That has come in handy once in a while. Rhythm of the Wild, um, creature spells you control can't be countered, so that's great if you're in uh, playing against blue decks. And then uh, you can give non-token creatures Riot, so they enter with your choice of plus one, plus one, or haste. So you typically want to give them haste. Uh, aura Shards for the targeted removal of artifact and enchantments. You're making a ton of creatures, so it's almost always going to be active. Sometimes you can pop three to four a turn, uh, even. Little Draw Power, Groups Uprising, um, gives stuff Trample, and then you draw a card every time something with uh, power four or greater comes out, which is almost everything in your deck. Um, there's a couple that I wouldn't trigger for, but it's a great, great spell for draw power. The Smothering Tithe for mana, uh, we run the Hellkite Tyrant, so that gives us treasures as, uh, that helps with the, the Hellkite Tyrant win condition. Um, Smothering Tithe is just a good card overall. Defense of the Heart, uh, this is kind of a new include as well. Uh, it's been in and out, but I'm trying it out right now. If your opponent has three, if any opponent has three or more creatures, during your upkeep you sacrifice this and you go get any two creatures you want and bring them out. Even if uh, you're already, you know, winning, you know, there's a, the games of EDH that I play, there's always a lot of creatures, and so this almost always goes off, or worst case scenario, they don't want this to go off, and they'll cap their creatures, and they won't ever put more than two out, so that you don't get this, in which case, that's just slowing the game down for you to build up your engine, so it kind of does either one or the other. And then lastly, I think this is the best enchantment of the deck, <clears throat> Possibility Storm, uh, I use this as protection because it's just such a good card. Um, you know, in my last video as well, I kind of went into it. Uh, when it's out, you know, it doesn't really affect you because you can still bring out creatures from your deck with Atlaplani's effect as long as you have a sack outlet or a haste enabler, if both would be ideal. Um, and then your opponents have to work around it. Anything they cast, they have to go and search for the next of that card in their deck and they can cast that instead. So it's really hard to get rid of it. Uh, you have to basically cast the targeted removal spell and, uh, and then kind of go into a targeted removal spell. Or, you know, any sorcery, any instant that they cast, they have to you know, they have to get lucky and get into their, their deck, which if you have a Void Winnower out, like I was saying before, is uh, it, it's a 50-50 chance, right? So if they cast a one-mana spell card and then they, you know, search their deck with possibility and they come up with a two, inst two, two CMC instant, they can't cast it because it's even. Um, so it shuts that down as well. But... Uh, that's pretty much it for the enchantments. Um, did some changes, but overall it's definitely good. And you can grab any of them with uh, when you sacrifice an Academy Rector. And now we're going to run uh, into the artifacts. Uh, going with the easy ones first, we'll do some Mana Rock. Soul Ring, obviously. Arcane Signet, obviously. And then the three Signets uh, on color. The, they just help you ramp the deck. You, you can bring out your commander by turn two or three. Um, big one is getting into the sack outlets. We're running a Claws of Gix. Um, costs zero mana, which is nice, and it's pay one generic, sacrifice a permanent, you gain one life. Uh, so the egg, you're going to be sacrificing the egg. Skull Clamp, not really a sack outlet, but a way to kill your eggs. So you get to draw two, and you get the Atlet Plani effect. So it's actually a really amazing card. 
spawning pit, uh, sacrifice creature. So it's a sac outlet and you can put spawning charges on them and make spawns later. I don't really use that too often, um, but it's an instant sac outlet. So you can do it during your opponent's turn. Altar of Dementia, um, not a big deal for milling ourselves because the creature, the eggs creature power is zero. So you're not gonna be milling yourself. Or if you wanted to do a little bit of mills, you could sacrifice your big creatures and mill your opponents for the, that as well. Um, but another instant sac, probably the best one here, Ashton's Altar. Um, you can sack an egg, and then with that two generic mana, you can make another egg. If your commander's untapped, sacrifice that one, and you can kind of keep going with it. It's, it, it's, it can be a lot of fun. Uh, Lightning Greaves for protection. Really any card, but I like to put it on Atla Palani, um, just because she just you need to protect her. She, if she dies, your strategies get, get shut down so fast. Um, or whatever you bring out, the creature you bring out during your turn, if you don't have a haste enabler, you can make it give uh, equip the Greaves to it, attack with it, and then remove the Greaves over to Atla Palani again. Uh, we're going to scroll rack to top deck manipulate uh, because that's a big deal with this. If you have a card in your hand, a big creature that you want to bring out, you can uh, put it on top of your deck for the Atlapalani effect. And then lastly, this is probably the best artifact in the deck, which is Maskwood Nexus. So creatures you control are every creature type. So they're shamans, they're dragons, they're eggs, they're everything. Um, so when anything dies, uh, it triggers Atlapalani. If you have the Harmonic Prodigy out, it'll trigger twice because it's also a shaman. Um, if you have anything that with the dragons, like Udvara Hellkite, any, anything that attacks at all, will, you'll get another dragon effect. Um, so it, it really makes your creatures amazing, uh, even more so. So uh, for four mana, it's absolutely worth it. And then you can create a uh, token from it as well. All right, now into the instants and sorceries. Uh, updated a couple of this, took out a couple cards, put in a couple new ones. Uh, start with the ramp. We're gonna do three visits. Um, search for library for a forest card. Put it on the battlefield. I feel like that's better than uh, the other ones. Like uh, I'm drawing a blank on Far Seek and Rampant Growth that bring out basics tapped. This can just be a forest, so it can be any of your shocklands. The other one that's very similar in nature is Lore. Um, forest is probably green is probably the the one you need to get out first to start doing your plays. Uh, we run one Cultivate. I took out Kodama's Reach. Um, they're really the same thing. I had a Foil Cultivate. That's why I left it in. Took out the Kodama. Uh, you know, I didn't need two. Um, you know, just one is good enough because I was when you're drawing two or you're drawing another one late game, it's like I don't really want to cast this. Uh, Sky Shroud Claim is the last uh, sorcery we run for ramping. Uh, essentially, you go search for two forests. So all these pretty much grab forests, but we run enough forests, basic lands, as well as uh, shock lands and dual lands that can bring them out. Into some targeted removal, we run a Swords to Plowshares. Um, pretty much every white deck probably runs one. Nature's Claim uh, for Artifact and Enchantment removal. <clears throat> Wear and Tear, same thing, Artifact and Enchantment removal. Chaos Warp, uh, generic, just permanent removal. Um, can be really cool. You can even use it on your own thing if you uh, want to get lucky and grab a creature. Only run one Board Wipe, Wrath of God. I upgraded this because... Just that they're regenerated. Um, it happened once where I had Day of Judgment, the old, the other uh, Wrath effect, but that doesn't stop your opponents from regenerating, and then they did. So I'm like, all right, screw that. I'm putting in Wrath of God just for the can't. Uh, it's the same exact thing, so why not? Uh, Natural Order. This is an awesome two for one. So you sacrifice a green creature, and you go and get a green creature from your deck. And so you sacrifice the green eggs, and you get to go use Natural Order's effect to go bring out a giant creature, a Terracidon, or a Zakama, and then you get the Atlapalani effect. You probably want to chain this so that you can grab your Natural Order first, just in case. I have had it happen where I get the creature that I wanted to search for, and that was my only target, so you get screwed over a little bit there. Um, but nice thing is you can chain it. And then lastly is Sylvala Stampede. Uh, this card is just awesome for uh, psycho <laughs> reverse psychology. Um, basically, you declare wild or free, and then uh, for every wild card, you get basically your commander's effect, and then for every free card, you get to just drop a permanent for free from your hand. So you basically, if you say free, uh, everyone else might say free because they want you to utilize your hand and not get your deck effect, or you can say wild. I usually always say wild, and then everyone else says free. Um, and, you know, it's just it's cool the little reverse psychologies you can use because... Based on what you declare first, they might, you know, change what they're going to say. But in the end, you still get a ton of value. You're basically dropping stuff for free, your big creatures from hand, or you're getting them from deck. So, All right, now if you've made it this far in the video, I'm just going to go through the lands real quick. There uh, really isn't much to it. You guys probably know most of them. But uh, we've got the Handware Battlements for uh, giving creatures haste. We've got High Market as a sack outlet. 
uh, life gain, but not really. We're going to Temple of the False Gods because uh, I like tapping one land to utilize that Laplani's effect, so it taps for two mana. We run one, two, three, four forests, basic lands, one, two, three mountains, one, two, three plains. Uh, not a ton, but they do they do their job. Uh, we run all three of the fetch lands, Wooded Foothills, Arid Mesa, Windswept Teeth, Fabled Passage, great card as well, Command Tower, of course. Uh, and then getting into some of the dual lands, Cliff Trap Retreat. Uh, one of the new cards, Sundown Pass. I like these cards. These uh, enters the battlefield tapped once you control two or more lands. Um, because you're more likely to control two or more when you draw it than having the two or less, that those, those exist as well. But if you run too many of them, then you're going to have them in your starting hand. But in a three-color deck, you can only run three, so it's it's pretty uh, pretty good. Sacred Foundry, uh, Needle Leverage Pathway, Rugged Prairie, Rock Vale Fall, Rock Fall Vale, geez, <laughs> Spire Garden, Stomping Ground, Crag, Con Crag Crown Pathway, that one's a tongue twister, Cinder Glade, Rootbound Crag, Carplusion Forest, Brushland, Temple Garden, Sun Petal Grove, Branch Loft Pathway, love this art, and Canopy Vista. So those are the lands. I think there's 34 total, and uh, you can ramp out real quick with it, but that's pretty much it for the update. Um, let me know what you guys think, and if you have any other suggestions.